What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of GH, um, I enjoy the scene at um, Charlie's. I'm trying to remember the name. I'm blanking out. <laughs> I enjoyed that scene. I was hoping when the gunmen came in there and they were all pointing their guns at Nina. Now, I wasn't hoping that they would kill her, but I was hoping that one of the gunmen would get a little trigger happy and put a bullet in her ass. I was hoping so, but no no luck. I was really hoping so. I said, go ahead, Mr. Gun. Go ahead and pop one in her. Put it in the leg or something, you know, something non-fatal. You know, just for shits and giggles so I can laugh. <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. Um. So anyway, yeah, those dudes that came up in there, they were definitely amateur. Very amateur. Um, They were like bumbling idiots. And Sonny started to realize that. Because when Dante was questioning Sonny, they were all, you know, trying to figure out, was it a random, you know, burglary or did they do it because they knew Sonny owned it? Basically, Sonny's power in Port Charles is diminishing at this point. And even Brando backed it up because he said that he was hearing rumblings at his garage that some people feel like Sonny's power base in town is weak at the moment. With only two crime families in the town and Jason being gone, his position is weak in some. Um, I could definitely see Brando stepping up to the plate. You know, Brando, Sonny was impressed with the way Brando handled himself in that situation. He was stealthy. He was smart. He thought on his feet. Sonny was impressed. Um, and even though Brick is kind of, you know, filling a position where Jason is concerned, Brick is only doing it on a technical basis, technology and stuff like that. Jason, he was muscle. You know what I'm saying? That's what Sonny needs. So I could definitely see um, Brando filling that position. And it was so funny because Sasha was telling Brando, oh, don't make a habit of doing stuff like this. Too little, too late because it's about to be, it ain't about to become a habit. It's about to become a damn career for Brando. Um, I mean, it's inevitable. It was inevitable. The writing was on the wall for Brando to, at some point, join Sonny's organization. Because they've been foreshadowing it, oh, you know, for the past year, at least, over a year. They've been foreshadowing him possibly joining the organization. It looks like it's going to happen. Um, And it was so funny, because I'm like, Sasha, she could not take a second. This chick was over here popping that little pill. I'm like, you know what? Somebody need to get her into some type of clinic now. Like, she need to go to some type of rehab right now not now but right now she needs to go um so yeah Sonny you know Sonny was like listen I'm about to show these motherfuckers who I am you know Sonny has to reestablish his power base he has to show people in Port Charles like look my organization is far from weak I'm still strong I, I got this you know what I'm saying he's gonna have to send a message to let everybody know like listen the Corinthos organization is very strong because if not, every Tom, Dick, and Harry in that town, every low-life criminal is going to be trying to, you know, come after him. So, Sonny going to have to do something. You know, he's going to have to plug that hole and show everybody why he is Sonny Corinthos at this point. And, you know, he's going to have to let these criminals and that these little criminals know, like, listen, play with your mama, don't play with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? you got to send a stern message. Quick. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Um... So anyway, moving on from that, listen, <laughs> Carly came over there quick, fast, and in a hurry when Dante and Sam was getting into it about the phone, about him catching her in, um, in his phone. Carly tried to come over there. It was my fault. I, took, I am so glad Drew came up when he did and said, nope, let's go. I said, thank you, Drew, because it, it really, I, I, I understand Carly wanted to take ownership for what Sam did, but at the end of the day, Sam's a grown woman. She knew what she was doing. You know what I mean? So it don't matter what Carly said, they were still going to have an issue. So it's like back on up, you know, and Carly, I'm glad Drew reminded her, like you interfering in somebody's relationship. When has that ever worked out for you? And I'm glad she said, yeah, it hasn't. I'm like, exactly. Mind your business. Um, Carly, I totally get where she coming from, where Esme is concerned. Like Carly wants to take this girl down because that's just Carly. When Carly sees somebody as a challenge, especially when they're messing with, the, with her friends or her family or something like that, she gets this tunnel vision where she was like, you know what? I want to take you down. I get it. But you know what? 
I think Carly need to stand down on this one. You know, I understand that's her daughter, but I think, you know, there's more than enough people already working on this. And I don't think Carly should be involved. Not in that aspect. I don't think she should work on trying to get the goods on Esme. And Drew reminded her that. He was like, you know, just because you want to take Esme down don't mean it's going to be, you know, you're going to be the one to do it. And I agree. I don't think Carly will be. You know, leave this to somebody else. Um, all she can do is just be there for Jocelyn. And that's what Carly's trying to do. You know, she's trying to put all her energy into everybody else because she doesn't know what to do with herself. Um, she doesn't know what life after Sunny looks like. But I'm like, I don't understand why she's questioning her life after Sunny. I mean, her and Sunny have been married and divorced like five, six times. So do what you did the last five, six times. Pick up the pieces, move on with your life. Find something new or find someone new. Um, I would like to see Carly single for a while, you know, just kind of playing the field for a minute. I don't think she should rush into no relationship. A serious relationship, I don't think she should. I think she should take some time for her. Um, but like I said before, I could definitely see her and Drew banging. You know what I mean? You know, doing a little hibbity-dibbity on the mattress now. I could see them doing that. But as far as a relationship, no. Not right now. Mm -mm. But I'm glad Drew is there to calm her down and talk to her because without Jason and stuff like that, Carly needs somebody to vent to and keep her in check a little bit. Um, so I'm glad Drew is, you know, picking up the mantle on that. But yeah, I could definitely see some sexual chemistry between them. Maybe even some romantic. But like I said, I'm good on them becoming a couple right now. I need them to just go ahead. Because they look like they just want to do it. You know what I mean? But they're stopping you know, they're, they're stopping themselves from doing it. But they look like they want to do it. And I want them to do it. You know what I mean? Release that energy. Go ahead and do it. Um, But yeah, Carly just need to move on with her life. And I read somebody on Twitter said it. They was like, oh, Carly should drop the last name Corinthos and go back to her maiden name. Why? She don't need Because somebody said it proves if she drops Corinthos from her name and goes back to Benson, then it would prove that she's, you know, really letting Sonny go. In my opinion, no, it doesn't. Plenty of people have divorced their spouse and kept their married name and never went back to the spouse. You know what I'm saying? It's like she's been known as Carly Corinthos for years. So why should she change now? You know, even when she was married to Jack, she went by Carly Jacks. But her full name, whenever somebody would say her full name, they would call her Carly or Caroline Lee Corinthos Jacks. She never dropped the Corinthos from her name even after she married Jack. So why should she now? You know what I mean? Keep the name. That doesn't mean that she want him back. But I'm pretty sure at some point her and Sonny probably going to get back together in the future. But for right now... I say she should just, you know, take care of herself, take care, you know, her kids and have fun. That's what I think the next chapter is, you know, just her reinventing herself. You know what I'm saying? Just taking time out for her, still being there for the family, of course, but taking more time for you. That's what she should do. You know, do a little, you know, soul searching, a little self-discovery, maybe, you know, I, I think it would be a good thing for her character after all these years, you know, do something for you, find something fun, a new hobby, something. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, yeah, Dante was not happy about Sam being all up in his phone. I can't say I blame him, but I was super surprised that Sam admitted to what she was doing. I was shocked. I was expecting her to come up with some little lame excuse as to why she had his phone, but she was honest with him. You know, she, she told him the real, which I was surprised by. I'm like, anybody else would have been like, yeah, I was, you know, trying to see the weather today. I was trying to, you know see you know put a little game or something that you know danny told me about on your phone see if you and rocco would like it you know some bs like that you know what i'm saying but she didn't i, I respect it she she told her truth and of course dante was pissed i feel like and i do agree with spinelli i feel like sam made a mistake but it's a fixable mistake you know what i'm saying like it can be rectified and i'm glad spinelli was there for sam and stuff like that you know she needed somebody to talk to but I feel like her and Dante need to sit down and have a conversation. Um, and she has to realize, like, unless she's working with him as a private investigator on a case, even still, it's like he can't tell you certain information. You know, it's privileged information. It's an active investigation. He can't give you that. And she knows this. You know, so I think they'll work it out. You know, he's going to be pissed for a little hot second. But I definitely feel like they're going to, you know, fix it, figure it out, work it out. I like Sam and Dante together for the moment. You know, I, I was on the fence about them at first because, you know, they got too many family members in common. You know, hell, they share siblings. But, it, <laughs> you know, it's a little crazy. It's like, 
you know, but I get it. Um, but I like their chemistry, though. I'm not mad at it. Listen, I love how Spinelli rides for Maxie. Like, he really rides for that woman. Like, even though they haven't been together in years, he always looks out for her because he was not keen on um, Mr. Austin. And, you know, Maxie was like, well, I like him and I hope that you can support the relationship or whatever it is that we're doing. You know, try to like him and stuff like that. But she got to understand something. Because she said to Spinelli that he acts like this with every guy that she dates. That he feels like that none of the dudes that she date are worthy of her. In my opinion, he acts like this about every man that you date because you have questionable taste in men. Like, there's only been a handful of guys. I could count on maybe one hand how many dudes she been with that were actually good dudes. The rest have been criminal cycles, just nutcases. So... I can understand why Spinelli is overprotective of her when it comes to new men in her life. I get it because a lot of them have turned out to be nuts, crazy, trying to kill her, trying to kill people connected to her. I totally get them. You know, I would be like that, too, especially when y'all have a child involved. You know what I'm saying? Y'all share a child. I totally understand why he's protective, because whoever you bring into your life is eventually going to interact with his child. Look what happened with Peter. You know, look what happened to that Levi Dunkelman character. You know what I'm saying? Like, she has questionable tastes. Like I said, not everybody she picked is bad, but some of them have been, you know, very questionable. So I can totally understand where Spinelli is coming from. He's trying to be a friend, you know, and also a responsible parent when it comes to their child. You know, so I totally get it. Um, BLQ and Chase, I am so tired of them dancing around each other. Like, their communication is dreadful. Their communication is very dreadful. Like, it's a big miscommunication between them. You know what I'm saying? BLQ clearly wants to be with him. He clearly wants to be with her, but it's just they don't talk about how they really feel about each other. And they feel, you know, they don't want to ruin the friendship that they have. I'm like, well, y'all need to stop dancing around this. Y'all clearly want to be with each other. Have that conversation and take a chance. Damn. I'm getting so tired of watching them just go back and forth with this little relationship thing that they're doing. Like, they really need to get it together and be a couple because I'm over it at this point. Um, You know, and Chase feels like he keeps letting her down and he keeps hurting her. I'm like, you're not. It's just y'all like each other. Start talking. Damn, it don't take this much. Um, So anyway, moving on from that. So now Spencer wants to go to Cameron and tell Cameron, oh, I'm just playing Esme now. Oh, I've been new all along that she was guilty. Oh, I'm just trying to, you know, get her to let her guard down and stuff. So now he claimed that he playing her or whatever. Um, At this point, I don't give a damn. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Um, I did like Spencer with Trina, but that's too much drama. That's that's too much. And I know we're on a drama show. Picture that. Somebody saying too much drama on a drama. But <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I like Trina's chemistry with Rory. I freaking love it. Again, we don't know much about Rory. Um, for all we know, he could be some type of psycho undercover cop. We don't know what he is. But it was so funny when her and Jocelyn went to um, Kelly's. And he was just staring at them and stuff, like staring them up and down. Jocelyn thought he was one of those dudes that, you know, was watched the sex tape and, you know, he recognized her. But, you know, Trina had to nip that in the bud. was like, nah, it's the cop. And he told Trina, you know, it's good that she got friends that are supportive and to keep her head up and, you know, keep her chin up and stuff like that. He want him some her. I knew it from the first day they met in that interrogation room when he got her a soda. Then at the courthouse, when he was all chipper and stuff like that, all, you know, eager to help, like, oh, I can take her out in the hallway and keep an eye on her. And he was all happy with that smile. I'm like, he want her. That man want her. See, and that's why I say Rory is a man. Spencer is a boy. There's a difference. So I, I'm still shipping Trina and Rory. Like, I understand Trina got feelings for Spencer or whatever, but she need to snap out of it and get over it. And move on to something else. Because I just feel like it's just going to be a whole bunch of issues down the road. Because Spencer is an idiot. Like, I agree with Cameron on this. Why not just tell Trina or Jocelyn what the hell is going on? No, I can't tell them. I got to keep this secret for now. I got That's so dumb. Just freaking tell them that you're playing the girl. 
You know what I'm saying? Just tell them that instead of being an idiot. Not telling is what's going to get you in trouble because Trina thinks already that he's an ass. And I'm glad he admitted it to Cam that he's been acting like an ass with Trina. Um, I am happy that he's playing Esme, but as far as him and Trina go, I, I much rather prefer her with somebody else romantically. Um, my honest opinion, I rather. I think she could do better. But I already know when the truth come out, Trina probably going to end up going back to Spencer, which I'm dreading. Um, but I want to know more about Mr. Rory. I want to know about him. Like, who his parents? What's his background? I'm guessing that the writers are probably going to flesh him out, you know, slowly but surely. But I want to know more about him because I'm liking the chemistry that I'm seeing. Um, so anyway, that was a pretty decent episode. Pretty good. Um, I enjoyed it. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about it. And I will see you all later. Have a great day. Peace.